or to those who hear. This is the witness before the world to the divine mission of his son. Any thoughts? Oh, go ahead, Michelle. Yes, so for the audience, I'll say what was shared here is that the greatest miracle that God can do is to transform a human life. That truly is the greatest miracle. Well, Byron. I'll piggyback on that. And that transformation actually helps come from what you behold. Are you spending time with Christ or are you spending time with something else, anything else? Because as they, they always go with parents, right? You know your kid by their friends. You know the Christian by what they take in. But you know Adventists have traditions too. Mm -hmm. They turn people off sometimes. <clears throat> I mean, there's times when, at least in the day, that they measure women's skirts, dresses. How, how high were they? From or we go to the unsavage to go to the ocean, you can only have water up to your ankles. You can't go swimming. Uh -huh. I haven't heard that one. It's hard for us to see ourselves. The mirror is pretty tough. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's good. No, it isn't. Yeah, so, so there are traditions that we have, too, that we've um, kind of grown accustomed with over the years. But it, I think we're called to be filled by the Spirit and look at things like God does. Well, th there was another topic that I wanted to approach before we leave this day, and that's the next um, thing. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. So when Jesus sighed deeply in his spirit, turning from the group of cavaliers, he re-entered the boat with his disciples. In sorrowful silence, they crossed the lake. They did not, however, return to the place they left, but directed their course towards Bethsaida. Uh, and then he said, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. The Jews had been accustomed since the days of Moses to put away leaven from their houses at the Passover season, and they had thus been taught to regard it as a sign of sin. Yet the disciples failed to understand Jesus, and their sudden departure from Magdala, they had forgotten to take bread, and they had with them only one loaf. To this circumstance they understood Christ to refer, warning them not to buy bread from a Pharisee or Sadducees. Their lack of faith and spiritual insight had often led them to similar misconception of his words. Now Jesus reproved them for their thinking who had fed thousands with a few fishes and barley loaves that this solemn morning could have referred merely to temporal food. There was a danger that the crafty reasoning of the Pharisees and Sadducees would leave leaven his disciples with unbelief, causing them to think lightly of the words of Christ. And then I was going to apply that to how does that apply to us today. Are, th are there not some people today who use crafty reasoning to explain away some of the important teachings of the Bible? Um, and then I, I gave a couple of examples. For example, there are some Christians today who teach that you can believe both in Bible and in evolution, and that you can follow religion in its own sphere and science in its own sphere. So that, that's one example. Another example of crafty reasoning is those who say today in the Christian churches that you are, because you're saved by God's grace, you don't need to forsake your sins, but rather just continue to ask for forgiveness. Uh, such teaching is foreign to the Bible, and it's dangerous in practice. So I wanted to leave you before we end with the last verse here, which is, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light, who were once not a people, but are now a people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now who have obtained mercy. All right. And so 
Before I get to our final thoughts today, and she may throw something at me, Armand is going to be giving her testimony today in church today. Mm -hmm. So give her lots of smiles and reassurance as she's up there on stage because it's a big thing when you have to get up in front of people and share what's happened in your life. So we're, we're out there rooting for you. <laughs> You're welcome. She's got quite a testimony to tell too. I think you'll really enjoy this time. But as, as I close, I want to piggyback off of a lot that we've seen with these Pharisees and, and the issues that of, of them not embracing the Gentiles and, and everything, uh, you know, their, their tradition over, over Bible and a lot of these issues that we've talked about today. And it comes from the desire of ages and I, I think it really applies to us as well. It says, among followers of our Lord today, as of old, how widespread is the subtle deceptive sin? How often our service to Christ, our communion with one another, is marred by the secret desire to exalt self. Ouch, huh? And, and we see that in, I see that in myself sometimes, and, and I see it also in others. How ready the thought of self grandulation and the longing of human for human approval. It is the love of self and the desire for an easier way than God has appointed that leads us to the substitution of human theories and traditions for divine precepts. To his own disciples, in the warning words of Christ are spoken. Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. The religion of Christ is sincerity itself. Zeal for God's glory is the motive implanted by the Holy Spirit. And only the effectual working of the Spirit can implant this motive. Only the power of God can banish self-seeking and hypocrisy. This change is a sign of his working. When the faith we accept destroys selfishness and pretense, when it leads us to seek God's glory and not our own, we may know that it is of the right order. Father, glorify thy name, it says in John 12, 28. As the keynote of Christ's life, and if we follow him, this will be the keynote of our life. He commands us to walk even as he walked, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. So we know that God is truly looking at our lives when we're able to get out of our own way, get out of self, and let God lead. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this beautiful Sabbath that we've had, for this wonderful lesson, Lord. We uh, ask that you would be with us now as we go into um, our church service, that you would bless us, that you would open our eyes and unstop our ears to what the Spirit has to say today. And Lord, be with us the rest of this Sabbath, that we're blessed in spending time with you in Jesus.